Sunday morning, December 13, 2020. So we are glad to be here today. We give greeting to those who are viewing us uh, through Facebook. Uh, we do welcome you to the Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church uh, here in the city of Gary, Indiana, where I am the pastor, Reverend Charles E. Adams, Jr. Amen. 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 So we want to uh, just welcome everyone, and we certainly thank God for those that are here with us today. Certainly thank God that I hear is certainly rapidly coming to an end. And so with that, we are grateful to God uh, that he has brought us this far. He has let many of us be able to survive what is still going on. And certainly it is a statement uh, of who our God is and how great he is. Yes. And certainly we praise him right now. So, so I do want to encourage us today uh, as we prepare to go forth and worship. Uh, I said on last Sunday, that this is our month we want to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we want to celebrate him because we know December 25th uh, is that day that has been designated as the birth of our Savior. But throughout uh, this month, uh, we just want to get a focus of him. Because I assure you that the more you just think on Jesus, the better he makes you feel. Uh, he changes your spirit and certainly your situation because it's more about him and less about the distractions. Because there are certain, certainly so many distractions that many believers and unbelievers are dealing with today. But uh, we have a hope, and, and our hope is in Jesus. And so at this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, open with this scripture for today. It comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7. And there's one verse that I want to uh, just read. It's verse 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that opening scripture. And so at this time, let's get ready to go in forth uh, for our worship today for this experience because I always like to describe worship as an experience. That means that we need to be able to go through something, amen, receive something as a result of our coming and not only our coming, but our participation, amen, amen, amen. because <laughs> all of us should bring something uh, to worship today, uh, not just to view the voices and amen, receive the singing, but all of us are participants in worship. And certainly at this time, let's get ready to hear from the voices of Pilgrim Rest with this opening selection so we can continue uh, forth in praise. God bless you.
of Jesus, uh, this worship of him today, and certainly we thank God uh, for others who have just joined us, glad to see uh, many of our, as they say, senior folks, uh, uh, as they said, those that I advanced in years, thank God for men and women I see uh, that are here with us today, God bless Amen. each of you, Amen. and certainly we thank God because your presence speaks. Uh, it lets us know that God has kept you through this storm. Because uh, y'all know this uh, pandemic has been a storm. Yeah, it, it's been a storm. Uh, it's been one storm we just can't wait uh, to come to an end. But as long as we stay with the Lord, uh, we're going to make it. Amen. As long as we are on that ship with Jesus, uh, we're going to make it. And so we thank God right now for being able to know that it's because of him that we live, we move, and we have our being. Amen. So God bless you right now. Amen. We do want to uh, get ready for our prayer. And certainly we know that there are so many, as they say, concerns that uh, we are still praying about, not only concerns, but for people. And even as we look today, uh, what is what is going on in our world uh, we can't stop praying, uh, but we got to keep on looking to God. We got to keep on seeking his face uh, because that's the key. If we seek his face, if we humble ourselves, if we pray and even turn from our wicked ways, then the Lord has made some promises. We can hear from heaven. Uh, he can forgive us of our sins and then he can heal the land. And we believe God is able to do that. Amen. Because there is no problem too great or too small that God cannot handle. And certainly, as we look to our heal list today, I do want us to remember uh, the following that I will uh, mention. Uh, Mother Kirkland and her family, uh, glad to see her here today. She had a cousin uh, that passed away, and certainly we want to pray for them. Uh, we want to pray uh, for a friend of mine, uh, his name is Joseph Smith. Uh, I worked with him about 30 years ago, uh, but uh, he was a deacon at New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church and very faithful, uh, passed away on Thursday. And so my heart really goes out to him, more or less for his wife and his family, uh, and even the New Bethel family and Pastor Lyons. We just want to lift them up in prayer today. Uh, also, uh, Reverend Andre Adams had given me information about one of our co-laborers in our state convention, uh, Sister Loretta Davison passed, and, and certainly our hearts go out uh, to the family of Sister Davison there in Indianapolis, because uh, she was a faithful soul, uh, certainly to our state convention and certainly to uh, the, her church where she served, and certainly the Lord has uh, let a good old saint uh, be laid to rest. And certainly our prayers are with them. Uh, we wanna keep all our sick today, uh, all the hospitalized uh, COVID patients. Uh, and not only that, we wanna keep praying for our hospitals, their, their staff, these frontliners, excuse me, frontline workers. Uh, we just wanna keep all of them uh, in prayer because uh, many hospitals are being overwhelmed uh, because of this uh, virus and people are continuing uh, to uh, catch it and get it. And so we just got to pray uh, because even for the sanity, uh, the mental state of um, frontline workers, because I think we don't realize uh, what the toll is on them mentally, but let's uh, keep them lifted up in our prayers. Uh, and not only I want us to remember these vaccines, especially uh, this first one we know that has come out and will be out soon. I know it's soon to be in the state of Indiana. 
if it's not here already. Uh, but uh, we want to pray for the safety of that vaccine because uh, there's a lot of hesitation uh, by some, especially among African Americans, about wanting to even take it. Uh, and I think that's because of our mistrust uh, towards the government and so forth. So, so let's pray uh, that we don't be afraid because uh, many of us will not be able to receive it uh, until they take care of all the frontline workers, uh, those who are already really ill and so forth. And so, so let's pray that the Lord has blessed this to be one of the remedies uh, for this virus. Let's keep our nation uh, also in mentioning our nation. Let's pray for healing of it yeah. uh, because we are still uh, confronted with Trump and his followers and them saying that the election was rigged. And when you go to judges, uh, even the Supreme Court, and they have said they find no evidence, I don't know what more you can tell. You know, And even, I'm gonna say this quickly, justices that you have appointed. Amen. Amen. They are still saying that there is no fraud. So so I, I'm just praying that God will certainly fix this because he's just trying to keep our nation divided. And even his followers cannot even see, the, as they say, the light of day because they are so convinced too. So, so let's pray that God will certainly help this nation and our world. Uh, let's keep our children. Uh, we are constantly uh, praying for them. And with the school situation, this e-learning that many of them are dealing with our teachers, uh, certainly like Sister Bonnie Bell, uh, let's pray for all of them because this is a different experience for them. Uh, also, let's pray for this season that we are in, this Christmas season, that this can be a season to uplift us because uh, it, it would just be wonderful that during this time that we can forget about these things that are going on around us. And, and, guess, and, and guess what? Leave it to God. Because I assure you that God knows how to handle everything that concerns us. Because God wants us to have some peace. Uh, wants us to be content. And certainly if we trust God, God can let us, uh, as they say, sleep at night. And, and not sleep tossing and turning. And so, so let's uh, pray that God will bless us during the season because even the homeless, those that are hungry, uh, children and so forth, let's keep them lifted up. And then finally, uh, let's uh, pray for the body of Christ because we do want to pray for us who make up that body. And let's pray for our family members and friends as well. Amen. So, at this time, if we're ready, let's bow. I do invite you to bow with us as we prepare to pray. God, Father, we come this morning. We thank you certainly for another day that you have made, another day that we can rejoice and be glad. God, we thank you for allowing us to come together at this hour. God, we just thank you because it is an expression of your goodness. God, we just pray now that you will certainly help us as we have gathered here today, that we can leave better than we can, that we can leave oh, more confident, oh God, more encouraged and power, that we can face what, oh Lord, the day will hold and even what the week may bring to us. God, we just pray right now because we know you can do it. We know you can enable us. And so, God, we call on you right now to be that constant presence in our lives. God, we're praying right now for these bereaved families. We're praying that you will help them in this time of their sorrow, their time of their grief. We pray, oh God, that you will let them understand that you care and that you are able to lift up their heads. You're able, God, to give them strength. So, God, remember the Kirkland families today, Lord, and Remember not only them, the Smith family today who are also mentioned. And so, God, we just pray for these and even the Davidson family down there in Indianapolis. Others that we may not know of, but God, we pray that you will be the comforter for them. Now, Lord, I pray for the sick today that are in every hospital right now. So those that are sick, even in their homes, sick 
and nursing facilities. God, we pray right now that you will heal that even those who are battling this virus, we pray for healing for them. We pray, oh God, that you will restore them and make them whole and make them well again. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Then, Lord, I pray today that you remember, Lord, the frontline workers. Bless them, oh God, these men and women who are going from day to day. Oh, Lord, service of people, Lord, even in the thread of their own lives, you are letting them go forth, not worry about themselves, but letting them, God, be a help to somebody. But God, in the midst of it, we pray that you will cover them, that you will keep them safe, that you will let them know that no harm will come upon them. So God, bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, I pray for the vaccine, Lord, that we have just heard of. We pray that it is a safe vaccine, that it is one that we don't have to worry, Lord, if it's going to harm us. But, Lord, let it be a mechanism, oh, God, that you will use to heal this virus. So, God, do it right now in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, I pray right now that you remember, Lord, our nation. Lord, our nation just needs healing right now. It needs you to step in. It needs you, Lord, to correct the wrong that is here. It needs you, Lord, to bring us together that we can be a united nation as we speak of. So, God, do it right now from the White House to every house. We pray, oh God, that you would do it right now. And then, oh Lord, all this confusion about the election, Lord, let it be settled, oh God. Let there be peace now behind the results, oh God, that we can move on as a people, Lord, under new leadership. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. Then, Lord, I pray, Lord, for our children today. I pray for them, oh God, because many of them, oh Lord, going through a strange time with us, a strange time in learning, a strange time in school. But God, we know you are able right now to let it work for their good. And that's what we ask of you, Lord, to let it work for their good. That they can overcome, Lord, these things that may come against them. Bless our teachers, oh God. Help them, oh God, that they don't get overwhelmed. That they don't get, oh God, frustrated. But give them what they need, oh God, to know that they can handle, Lord, this assignment. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. Then, Lord, I pray for all of us, Lord, who are here right now. I thank you for everybody's presence. I thank you for how you have kept us. You brought us through the week, Lord, and we are here today. You took care of us, oh God, even in sickness, Lord, in distress, oh God, in ups and downs. You were there, and so we thank you right now. Lord, we just praise your holy name because it is a good name to give praise to. So God, bless us as we have a symbol today. Bless us in this worship. Let us, oh God, get uplifted. Let us get in power, Lord. Let us get encouraged, Lord. Let us get what we need that we can run on a little while longer. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Lift up that head that's bowed down. Give peace to that man in the struggle. Walk right now, Lord. Move right now in the precious name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray for every church today that was opening your name. Every word that goes forth in your name. Let that word, uh, oh, Lord, do what you're sent to do. Let me convince somebody that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we thank you right now uh, for your goodness. Thank you right now uh, for your mercy. Uh, thank you right now uh, for your love. Uh, oh, Lord, we thank you uh, for every blessing uh, that we are now enjoying. Hallelujah, Lord, uh, because you are so good. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, because you've been that good. Uh, so, God, we bless your name. Uh, we call right now, because uh, there's no other name uh, that we know to call on uh, but the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, Lord, to your name, uh, because it is a good name. It's a sweet name, uh, and we love your name. So, God, we thank you, and we praise you right now, because you've just been that good to us. And we know that as this year comes to an end, it's because of your goodness to us that we can still say thank you. So God, if there's anything 
that I have failed to ask. Please, Lord, don't fail to grant it. It's in your daughter's son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. And certainly we praise the Lord right now. And certainly thank God always for that privilege just to call on his name. And just have confidence in the one we call upon. Because that's what he wants us to have. And as they say, it's confidence knowing that whatever we have, what acts in his name. Amen. And if it's according to his will, he can hear us. And not only will he hear us, he can do something. Amen. So God bless you. And I encourage you, saints, just to hold on and don't give up. Amen. God didn't bring us this far to leave us right now. No, he didn't. He, and listen, he won't do it. Because guess what? He has a pact with us that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you think I ain't there, I'm right there still. Amen. Amen. You just don't know I'm the one holding you up. When you can't feel my presence. I'm the one giving you the power to keep pressing on. And so, we, so we thank God right now. Amen. God bless you at this time. Let's get ready for another selection uh, that we can continue on in our worship. God bless. Thank <laughs> you. 
this is certainly another day of thanksgiving and certainly we thank god that every day is certainly can be said the same and we are so appreciative right now uh, for this moment uh, because it is another precious moment uh, but also a fleeting moment uh, that we will not be able to recapture but certainly uh, we just got to reflect on even how precious life is uh, because uh, if this year has not taught us that, then as they say, what more can happen? Uh, because we have had loved ones who have been near and dear to us that are no longer uh, on the scene. Uh, but uh, we just thank God for their lives, uh, that they were able to live on this earth. And certainly God has kept us because, uh, as they say, I guess he's not through with us yet. <laughs> Amen. Uh, because uh, it has been appointed as the scripture will declare unto man once to die. But here is uh, the other part of that. But then there's judgment. And, and certainly I don't think if you are in Christ, that ought to be something you ought to fear. Uh, our judgment is much differently from those who uh, don't know the Lord. And certainly we just are glad today. Uh, but I, I do want to, um, uh, I do believe uh, this right, uh, Brother James Jones, is his birthday today. Amen. 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 And the Lord bless him. Amen. 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 Is that what, 88? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for letting him live this long and have so much longevity there because it's a blessing. Uh, when the Lord lets you get over four score. Uh, but he's four score and eight. Amen. That's 88. Because I, cause I always try to explain that score equals 20. So you do four times that. That's 80. Then plus the other years, that's 88. <laughs> Amen. So so we thank the Lord for that. I don't know if there's anyone, anyone else who's got a birthday today with him. But uh, if you do, maybe out there listening, we say happy birthday to those viewing us through Facebook. But uh, we thank the Lord. It's always a blessing that he allows us to have another year uh, of existence. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and you know what? Within the year uh, of the year that's ending. Uh, and that's something to praise God for. Uh, he let us reach uh, the years that he has allotted us. And certainly we thank God. All right, but at this time, we're going to go ahead uh, and look to the Word now. Uh, we're going to uh, look at Luke chapter 2, uh, looking at verses 8 to 12, uh, which is very familiar uh, since we are in this uh, month of celebrating uh, our Savior. Because uh, on last Sunday, uh, we brought the message of uh, 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 um, uh, we talked about last week a message uh, of hope uh, and so this week it's going to be saying a message but it's going to be a message for all people but we're going to read the passage I'll go ahead as they say and give the subject out ahead anyway amen but look at it, Luke chapter 2 8 through 12 and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And as we said for a subject, we want to preach today from, from this sort of message for all people. Let us bow. God, we come now. We certainly thank you always for being able to stand behind this sacred desk. We pray for your power to rest upon us that we can preach your word, be your messenger even for this day. So God, let the word go forth, let it accomplish your purpose, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 God bless you. We certainly want to uh, again thank the Lord because we have been intentional 
this month uh, personally uh, because it has been a purpose of trying to get us uh, to think about Christ, amen, and who he is, what he has done for us. And so we look today, uh, and if you would notice uh, in the text, there are some things that take place. Uh, the birth of Jesus had already been accomplished. Joseph uh, had brought Mary to what we learned to be a stable. And the reason why, because there was no room for them uh, at, in the end. And so Mary, we understand, she gives birth to Jesus. And what she does next, she wraps him in what Luke described as swaddling clothes. And swaddling clothes were like strips of cloth. And they were used to wrap newborn babies. And so, so this mention, as we look of the manger, is the basics for this traditional belief that Jesus was born in the stable. And stables, if we may understand this, were often caves. They were not what we imagine in our modern time, but they were caves with what we understood to be feeding troughs. That's what those mangers were. And they were carved into what they call rock walls. Now, despite this popular, Christ, as they want to say, Christmas card pictures, and many of us probably are in the process of sending out cards. And, and on some cards, we have that just beautiful manger picture, that manger image. And some have their nat nativity scenes. And, and so, so that is what that popular theory comes from. But if you look closely at the time and the, the place of where this took place, that this was a dark and dirty situation. And I put it that way because Jesus was not in no fine facility. And if you consider him being in a manger and certainly being in what some consider to be what they call a cave, it was not the best of circumstances. So, so the atmosphere, as we understand, was not what the Jews expected as the birthplace of what they call a Messiah King. They thought their promised Messiah would be born in royal surroundings. Because y'all did know, you do know that Jesus did come from royalty. Yeah, God the Father is, is royal. He, he is majestic. He is what we would say the highest. And so so he came from, you know, from a place in glory all the way down here. And so, so now we, we look at this and we got to look at it this way, that we should not limit God by our expectations. Because we do that. Because all of us in here have some expectations about what God ought to do or what God can't do. But, but don't never limit God because of your expectation. Because he is at work wherever he is needed in our sin, dark, and dirty world. And can I describe it like that? Because no matter how we look at this world, it is still sinful and is dirty and dark. But the birth of his son is proof that God knew we needed, amen, someone. Someone, amen, that could rescue us. Someone that can bring hope to us. And that's why when we look at this, God would let his son be the one that would be revealed. And, and, and guess what? It was not what many expected, but what God does at times, he does a lot of things that we don't expect. Because look at this. He chose Shep. Not the political or the religious leaders of the day. He chose shepherds to receive the news of the birth of his son. Because history records that these were shepherds who cared for lambs that were used as sacrifices in the temple in Jerusalem. And so they were already in position. They were already the, the ones that God could choose because they were caretakers already of sheep. But, but, but what we look here, 
God ordained that this would take place. Because these shepherds were, as we understand, they were in that same country, not far from where Jesus was born. And they were doing this, keeping watch over their sheep by night. They were doing their jobs. They was doing what they had been, listen, in position to do. But yet God, and, and, and I marvel at this, he, he chooses that same night of that same day that his son was born to deliver a message to some lowly and humble shepherds. Now, a message that would not only be for them, but here it is. It would be a message for all people. Now, God, if you look at him closely, God has a unique way of doing things. I don't have to tell you that often, but he just got a unique way of doing things. Because it's like the prophet Isaiah said of God. He said this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your thoughts. And so the Almighty, he chooses shepherds to go see he who will be known as the chief shepherd. Now David, and, and thank God for David, David had already said in Psalm 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. This was no coincidence. This was God setting his plan in motion. And, and I hope you know God had a plan. He he, he was a God that was already foreknown. He was God already predestining things that my son would be already in place because I knew Adam was seen. So God already had this in place. But, but I'm so glad that as I look at this, God, could, listen, he could have chosen others more honored than these shepherds, but he chose them. And, and, and when you think about this today, brothers and sisters, aren't you glad that God will choose those that we don't expect? Yes. Amen. And, and, and some that we have what, already written on, some that we say ain't qualified, some that we say that, listen, that ain't right for them, but, but God knows best. Because, see, I see God sees a little further than we do about a person. We we looking at past with people. We ain't looking at possibility in them. We 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 looking at what we know about them, what we know they have done, but we ain't looking at promise in them. And that's why I'm glad that God chose some angels. Listen, He chose an angel to speak to some shepherds that the shepherds would be recipients of some good news. And so He did it because He wanted us to see, my friends, that He is no respecter of persons. So the angel of the Lord appears before the shepherds on this night. And while they were attending their sheep, this angel all of a sudden shows up. And not only that, it says the glory of God or the Lord surrounded them and they were very afraid. Now, think about that for a moment. That glory was just like light. Here you are in darkness. Amen. Watching over your sheep. And, and all of a sudden, this great light and this angel shows up. And our natural response is to be afraid. Now, somebody here say, well, I wouldn't be. But I, I guarantee you, if it caught you on, by surprise, your natural response is to what? Be afraid. And I'm glad that quickly the angel does something. Calms them down and let them know, I bring you good news. Now, the angel came with a message, and, and he was fulfilling his purpose that he was created to do. And one of the primary functions of angels was to be messengers. And I'm so glad that they have been used by God throughout the history of man. But, listen, but first of all, when we look at this message, it was a message of hope. And, and one thing I love about this, as this angel speaks... Particularly in verse 10, the angel says quickly unto them, well, fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Yeah. Now, now, brothers and sisters, that angel was bringing a message of hope. It would be a message that will now give people some confidence. It would give them a reason to hold their heads up. It would give them a reason to trust God and, 
not worry about the nonsense that is going on in our world. And, and if I could speak about right now, that's what God wants us to do. He don't want us to get caught up in Trump and what Trump is doing because Trump, I got to say this about him, just wants some attention. And you keep on listening to him. You keep on watching the news. All he is doing is craving some attention just to stroke his ego. Because you know his ego is bruised. But, but, but I stand today not to deal with him but to talk to you that God wants us to understand there's a message I have for you. And that's why this angel spoke to these, listen, to these shepherds. And we're not told how many shepherds it was. Because sometimes you'll see these nativity scenes that people are just guesstimating, I guess. And they want to put about two or three shepherds there. But I don't know how many of the scripture is silent on how many shepherds. All we know it was shepherds. Yes, it was, it was plural. It was more than one. But, but the fact is, they receive a message of hope. How about them hearing this angel say, fear not, for I, for listen, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. That sounds like that's a message of some good news. And, and, and I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, I want some good news. I need to hear some good news. I'm tired of turning on the TV and picking up a newspaper, going on my tablet and looking at news, and all I'm hearing is this and that, negativity. Constant this and that. And, but we need, listen, some good news. And I'm glad this angel represented the messenger who was talking to some shepherds on a little quiet night. That I bring you some great news. Amen. And, and ain't it good that when God knows what to sin, it will change us. Anybody ever heard some good news or received good news that at the moment you was going through something, but all of a sudden God just let some news come to let you feel better, to let you smile, to let you know, listen, this is going to be all right. And so God let them receive a message of hope. But secondly, there was a message for humanity. And, and here it is. Look at how the angel continues. He says, I bring you good tidings of great joy, but here it is which shall be to all people. That, the message was for humanity. That's us. It was for us to be made glad. It was for us to know that God is going to rescue us. And can I talk about right now again, what we're going through, God is going to save us from it. I don't, I don't care what nobody said. Yes, we got vaccines that are on the way that are now present, but it's only going to be God that's going to rescue humanity. And, and, and I got to let the record be clear that we're putting too much hope in humankind when the great I am is our help. Because I'm so glad the psalmist said, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. It wasn't in the hill, but I know this, my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And so, brothers and sisters, God wants us to understand that the message I have is for you. And no matter how old this message might be, it's good news to somebody. Because y'all know the story is all about Jesus. Yes, and so I'm glad that the angel assures them that it's a message of hope, it's a message of humanity. It's a message that all people can receive it. Yeah. God ain't going to force it on nobody because even in our witness, we can't force this on nobody. But it's a message we can share, and if they want to hear it, they will. Amen. But I'm glad these were some observant shepherds. They were some, listen, some listening shepherds. And they did not, listen, just ignore what the angel said to them, but they, listen, received it gladly and were so grateful that the message was for all people. And I'm glad that that's how verse 10 will end. It shall be what? To all people. Now, y'all going to get it first. Amen. And, and, and God got to start with somebody. Because that somebody got to go and tell everybody. Amen. Then, if, listen, when you receive it, you ought to want to tell somebody. Listen about Jesus right. and what he's done for you. Yeah, yeah. But finally, my friends, I'm glad it was a message to the highest. Yeah. 
Amen. It was a message of hope. It was a message for him. But now it was a message of the highest. And, and, and how did we get there? Because of what he tells us in those verses to follow. He says, after he tells them, listen, it was all people. He said, here he is. For unto you is born. This day in the city of David, he says, a Savior. Amen. And he identifies who he is, he says, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Isn't that good news that right. that was a message to the highest? And I put it in that way because it was going and speaking of someone who is the highest. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that good news that they were now hearing about what this was all about? He tells them very plainly that in the little town of Bethlehem, there was one who was born in what we call the city of David. And, and see, the city of David was Bethlehem. And we got, got to understand that he told them that in that city was born a Savior, and, which is Christ the Lord. And, and he don't only stop there, but how about being able to find where he is? He said, this shall be a sign unto you that you're going to find the baby. And I'm so glad that Luke put it this way, that you're going to find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Listen, lying in a manger. Because he had to identify what you, he would look like and where you would find him. And because, listen, they could have went on to Bethlehem not knowing who they were looking for. And, but God always want to let us know clearly what he wants us to do. And, and that's why it was a message of the highest because it was recognizing the Son of God. And, and that's why sometimes you ought to say glory to God in the highest. Amen. Because of who he is and the position that he holds. And, and I don't know about you, I'm so grateful today that God got a message for not just the Christians, but for all people. And, and the message is simply about a little baby that was born in Bethlehem, oh, yeah. born of the Virgin Mary. And, and finding that there was no place for them to really live or dwell, they were in a little stable and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and they laid him in a manger. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, listen, that seems strange that you would put this little child in a place where animals eat from. Uh, but it shows us something about who Jesus is, uh, that he was humble enough uh, to submit himself to such a low way of being treated. Uh, to show to us that this is the reason that I came for all people. Uh, to let them know that I know how to relate to all people. Uh, that's why he had a love for all people. Uh, you didn't have to have status with Jesus. Uh, all you had to be was just who you are. Yeah. And I'm so glad that that's why it was a message of the highest. Uh, it was showing to us. Uh, he is our God uh, who came in flesh. Uh, who came through the womb of a woman. Uh, listen, he was born in Bethlehem. Uh, and they placed him in swaddling clothes. Uh, and they laid him in a manger. Uh, now all of us don't have a story like that. Uh, but we were born in a lot of hospitals. Uh, listen, in birthing places. Uh, some of us never experienced and we can't ever say we have. Uh, that we were born, listen, outside in some cave. Uh, or in some place where animals were there. Uh, but Jesus did. Uh, and God let it be so. Uh, but all I will let you know, uh, listen, as we hurry on, uh, we got to thank God. Uh, amen. For the good news uh, that he had for all people. Uh, it's still good news. Uh, especially uh, in a time like this. Uh, hear me again. Uh, in a time like this, uh, we need uh, some good news. Uh, we need a word uh, from the Lord. We need the Lord uh, to speak to us. Uh, that it will pick us up. Uh, that it will turn us around. Uh, that it will excite our souls. Uh, that it will bring satisfaction. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, in a time like this, uh, God uh, is still on the throne. Uh, God uh, is still speaking. Uh, and God is telling us, uh, hold 
hold on. Uh, don't give up. Uh, I brought you this far. Uh, I'm not going to leave you now. Uh, I know uh, you're in a go-through mode. Uh, I know uh, you're in the midst uh, of struggle and strength. Uh, but if you hold on, uh, if you trust me, uh, you will make it uh, to those dark times. Uh, hey, God, all right. Uh, but let me get on out of here. Uh, I'm so glad uh, this shepherd. Up, got it changed up to see Jesus up. Keep on reading on down up. They went in deep and up. Listen as the angel told them up. They saw a great sight up. They saw the Son of God up. They saw a beautiful baby up. They was wrapped in swaddle clothes up. But then listen up. They didn't just stop there up. But look at what they did up. When they saw Jesus up, they couldn't keep it to themselves up. They had to go up and Somebody up, they had to go tell up somebody up what they had seen up. I don't know up how many believe them up, but think about it up. If you would go up, if I would go up, and if we would talk up to somebody up, we got the news up to them about Jesus up. But I'm reminded up, y'all know what that song up. Go tell it up on the mountain up. Over the hills up and everywhere up. Go tell it up on the mountain up that Jesus up, Christ is born up. Well, that's why I'm on up. I want to let you know up. You need to do the same up. Go tell somebody up about how you know him up. Tell somebody up about how you heard up that he is up. A rock in a way land up that he is up. Shelter in your soul. That he is up, a doctor up in your sick room up. You need to tell somebody up how you know him up, what he's done for you up. You receive up a message of hope up. You receive a message up that changed your life up. I got news up. Take nobody up. Do you like Jesus up? Take nobody up. Save your life, Jesus up. Take nobody up. Hear your life, Jesus up. You need to tell somebody up what took place up. Jesus was born up. Yes, he was up. He grew up up and became a man up. He lived up. Yes, he did up. He loved up. He served up. He is God up. But the time came up. You know the story up. He took a cross up. He didn't do it up. Up the cavalry up. They hung him there up. He stretched out his hands up, bowed his head up, and he died. Up. Do you know up? That's the message up, that the world needs to know up. There's a Savior who saves up. There's a Savior who takes care of you up. What are you doing up? I'm so glad up. They died up, but they took him down up. You know the story up. Took him down up. Laid him in the grave up. about this message. This message is for everybody. Because yeah. Jesus did die for everybody. And he can save everybody if they would just, what, come to him. And so we got to thank God that during this Christmas season, we got to still share the message. And we got to tell them that our God saves. 
that I got to give and I got most of all love all of mankind. Because if he did not, he would not have gave his son. Love was the reason he did it. Didn't it say, for God so loved the world that he gave. And who, what did he do? He gave his own and he got his son. And then put an invitation to it that whosoever what believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I say to someone that might even be watching us right now, if you don't know him, this is the time while we extend the invitation to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. But listen, time is winding up. And I don't know about you, I believe the Lord is getting his son in that wait moment, waiting to come back. And when he come back, if you not one of his, you're going to get left behind. But in order to go where he is going to take us, you got to receive and believe in who he is. Amen. He died for your sin. But if you confess him with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it simply says, just thou shalt be saved. And that's how simple God has made this way. It's all through his son. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth. I am the life. And no man can go to the Father but by me. So if you're out there listening today, even if you might be in here and you're not saved, we say come and give your life to the Lord while you still have time. Amen. Because we don't know when our time might come. But isn't it be good to know that when it comes, your business is right with God? Amen. Because that means a lot. Amen. So God bless you. We see there is none, but there is still plenty of room in our Father's kingdom. And we praise God again right now. And even one, anyone who's listening today, we certainly always invite you to call our church. You can call my number if you need to talk because that is how serious we are about getting people to our Savior. Amen. So God bless you at this time. We're going to bid farewell to our listening audience and we thank them for the time that they certainly have spent with us in worship this day. And we say as we always say, the blessings of the Lord will be upon them.